We are tracking some breaking news at this hour. Police are investigating a suspicious device in downtown Coeur d'Alene near the Hitching Post Wedding Chapel. They said the device is covered in duct tape with wires sticking out of it. The Spokane Police Bomb Squad is on the scene. The surrounding area is blocked off to traffic. So this is still a developing story. We also have a crew on the way. As soon as we get an update, we'll be sure to pass it along to you right here on Krem 2 News as well as on Krem.com. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Jane is off tonight. Students in Spokane Public Schools could see some changes to their curriculum this upcoming school year. The district is proposing changes to the school's science, math and art classes. District officials say this gives students more control over their classes, but it could also help the district's budget. Krem 2 Shana Waltower explains the potential changes. Yeah, changes could be coming to your students' curriculum, and school leaders say this has a lot to do with budget as well as giving your students a choice. It all started with a $31 million budget deficit the school has been trying to make up. They announced teacher layoffs. Then some staff suggested also taking a look into changes that could come from the curriculum. Brian Coddington, spokesperson with Spokane Public Schools, says these changes are mostly reflected in school science and art classes. So if the changes are accepted, here's what things would look like for the upcoming school year. Schools can choose between an extra hour of science or visual arts courses, but students also have an option. They can choose between additional art or band and music classes. Now, Coddington says these changes paired with the others they are expecting for the year should drop the budget deficit to about $21 million. But teachers are also seeing some of these effects. Art teachers are either being reassigned to other classes or are not able to renew their contracts at all. I spoke with Katie Henry with the Spokane Education Association. She says she's also concerned with the decrease in control that teachers would have over content in their curriculums. Now, the superintendent has until June 26 to make a final proposal to the board. The board then has to vote by the end of August to officially vote on those changes. Shana Waltower, Crem 2 News. Opioids lead to cheaper drugs and people use heroin and fentanyl instead of opioids. And as we see their use increase in our town, those manufacturers that led to this crisis should be held responsible. The Spokane City Council is considering a resolution tonight to potentially take legal action against opioid manufacturers and distributors. Krem 2's Casey Decker is following this story for us tonight. He joins us live from downtown ahead of tonight's City Council meeting. Casey? Having some issues there with Casey's mic. Hopefully we'll get that worked out. And if we do, we can maybe go back to him later in the show. In the meantime, we will move on. Police say two people were shot and wounded at a rally for the Toronto Raptors and two people were arrested. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Toronto's mayor and the Raptors players were on the stage for the ceremony. It was briefly interrupted while authorities investigated the shots fired. Festivities for the NBA champions were briefly suspended but resumed shortly after. And it looked like there was somebody firing cross. And then there was a photographer stuck. I think it was a morning news photographer. And he was just like stuck in between the, the crossfire coming through. Well, people ran for cover as a gunman opened fire outside of a federal courthouse in Dallas, Texas. The gunman died in a shootout with police. Thankfully, no one else was hurt. A photographer with a Dallas newspaper was at the courthouse for an entirely different assignment when then he came within feet of the gunman. The FBI says the gunman was 22 years old. He was discharged from the Army in 2017. Idaho's four publicly funded universities are failing to meet all aspects of Title IX according to a new data from the state. Data submitted to the Idaho State Board of Education shows the universities did not meet standards for equal treatment of athletes, sports participation, or scholarship funding last school year. Title IX prohibits sex discrimination in education programs that are federally funded. Representatives from Boise State University, Idaho University, Idaho State University, and Lewis and Clark State College say they are working now to reach compliance. Boeing is apologizing to the families of the victims of the 737 MAX crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia. First, we are very sorry for the loss of lives as a result of the tragic accidents of both Ethiopian 302 
and Lion Air 610. Our first priority is doing absolutely the right thing and doing everything to get this airplane safely returned to service. At the Paris Air Show today, the company also apologized to airlines who were forced to ground their Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes. Investigations into the crashes are ongoing, but investigators say sensors in both planes malfunctioned, alerting anti-stall software to push the noses of the planes down, and the pilots were not able to take back control. 346 people were killed in those two crashes. Well, tonight, parts of our region are in a fire weather watch, and that's because it's pretty breezy out there tonight. Michelle Boss standing by in the Weather Center with more on that. Michelle? Yeah, we've had very, very warm temperatures over the last couple of days, but some breezy and dry conditions are on the way over the next couple of days, fortunately, along with some cooler temperatures. But before we get to those cooler readings, we've got to deal with the heat today and tomorrow. 85 degrees in Spokane, 84 in Coeur d'Alene, still seeing 90s at the 5 o'clock hour from Omak down to Wenatchee, Moses Lake, and Othello. It's been dry here in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, but we have seen some showers across the mountains of northeastern Washington and parts of the Idaho Panhandle, kind of zooming in there around the Colville area, Medellin along the Canadian border, seeing some showers. Some of them might have a little bit of small hail in them and some gusty winds. Also, I uh, saw a few showers just east of Coeur d'Alene around the Kellogg area. Most of that activity seems to have dissipated over the last hour. We're looking at a slight chance of a passing shower here over the next couple of hours. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies and dry weather as temperatures fall down into the 60s overnight and bottoming out in the upper 50s to around 60. Tomorrow is going to be our last warm day before some big changes come into the inland northwest. Mostly sunny skies, 83 tomorrow, turning windy Tuesday night into Wednesday with a high of 70 and even cooler on Thursday. Chance of showers and highs only in the low to mid 60s. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Sidewalks near a busy intersection in Spokane now have the word look painted on them. It's part of a pilot program to get pedestrians to look before crossing the street. So do you think seeing the word look on the ground will get people to check for cars before crossing the street? Let us know what you think by heading to creme.com slash vote or hit the vote now tab on your creme 2 app. Our Alexa block has more on this pilot program and how it's meant to keep pedestrians safe. Look, look. It seems like a simple message, but it's an important one, and a Spokane County Task Force wants to remind people to look both ways before crossing the street. The intersection of Brown Street and 2nd Avenue has a few new features you may or may not notice right away. The word look is painted on the sidewalks. It's a simple, low-cost reminder to look both ways before crossing the street. But it could save lives, according to the Washington Traffic Safety Commission and the Spokane County Target Zero Task Force. The groups joined forces to make intersections like these safer for people walking. According to the task force, in recent years, there's been an increase in pedestrians being seriously injured crossing the street. In fact, in 2017, 11 pedestrians were killed and 33 more seriously injured in Spokane County. But will the new paint job actually work? It's only been here for a few days, and there are mixed feelings on them. I wouldn't pay one bit of attention to it. I, I don't even know what's going on across the street. I'd be looking elsewhere, so I don't think it would be helpful to me at all. Small children that are walking with their parents, then if mom is visually doing it, but she's not mentally telling her child, like, oh, you need to look before you cross the street, the kid might read the sign themselves and go, mommy, look. And the reminder isn't just for those walking. The task force encourages drivers to slow down in areas where there are a lot of people walking. In Spokane, Alexa Block, Creme 2 News. So at the start of that story, we asked you having the word look painted on the sidewalk. Would that get people's attention before crossing the street? It looks like about 57% so far say yes. The other 43% saying no. Thank you to all who voted.